It's orc character time. Well, and the goblins as well, I suppose. Now, going to handle them a bit differently. So, pretty much all of them came under one category. War boss, big boss, standard bearer, boss, or shaman. The only difference was the tribe. As such, I'm going to be calling them tribe by tribe. Makes it a bit easier as well. The tribes all share the same special rules, so you might as well just get them all done in one go. Anyway, before that though, armory time. So, melee weapon wise, hand weapons were one, double handed weapons were two, halberds were two, and spears were one, missile weapons, bow for two, short bow for one, crossbow for three, armor wise, shields for one, and light armor for two. As for building the army, it's the standard stuff here. Up to 50% on characters, a minimum of 25% on mobs, up to 25% on war machines, up to 25% for monsters, and up to 25% for allies. For allies, they can take Chaos, Dark Elves, Skaven, or Chaos Dwarfs. Now, on to the characters, and the first tribe up are the Black Orcs. Of all the Orc bosses, Black Orcs are some of the largest and most fearsome opponents to fight. They are the result of a creation of the Chaos Dwarves, and they have little care about the scribbles of other Orcs, and if they see them do it, we'll proceed to crack down on them and end it swiftly. In battle, they show their skill and power by wielding weapons of ease to strike down multiple foes, and even if they are struck, they will usually shrug it off unless the blow is fatal. Suffice to say, fighting a Black Orc 1v1 usually ends in the Black Orc's favour. A Black Orc Warboss could be your general if you wanted, but to do so, you needed to take a Black Orc unit, and this is the same for any of the other characters. The War Boss is 140 points, Movement 4, Weapon Skill 7, Best Skill 6, Strength 5, Toughness 5, Ruins 3, Initiative 5, Attacks 4, Leadership 10. The Big Boss is 91 points, Movement 4, Weapon Skill 6, Best Skill 5, Strength 5, Toughness 5, Ruins 2, Initiative 4, Attacks 3, Leadership 9. The boss and standard bearer have the same stat line, though the boss is 42 and the standard bearer 92, and movement 4, from skill 5, best skill 4, strength 5, toughness 4, wounds 1, initiative 3, attacks 2, leech of So equipment wise, well they all come with a sword base, and bar the boss who had to be the same encrypt as the unit he was leading, they could have anything from the armory. Magic items, the war boss could have 3, the big boss 2, and the other 2 could have 1. Now for mounts, Unfortunately, the boss doesn't get anything, as Black Orc units can't have mounts. The others, they could take a War Boar for 8 points, an Orc Chariot for 81 points, or Dragons, Chimeras, Cockatrices, Griffins, Hippogriffs, Hydras, Gigantic Spiders, Manticores, Wyverns, or Giant Scorpions for the monster list. Now, special rule rise. Black Orcs don't care about animosity, but for the Big Boss and War Boss, this has an interesting effect. They could join and lead any goblin or orc unit, not just black orcs. If they do so while they're leading it, that unit does not roll for animosity, as they know if they squabble, uh, the black orcs gonna crump them. Yeah, black orcs in general were the beefiest of the orcs, and if you did want to control animosity, they are how you did it. Still, let's move on to the basic orc. Orc war bosses or orcs who have established total supremacy over the rivals, usually by killing them, but sometimes driving them out does occur. They now lead their tribe and others they have conquered to glorious conquest all over the, all the other puny races. E.g. anyone who's not an orc. Following them are their big bosses who have earned the war bosses' favour and now will help control the orcs and goblins of their tribe to ensure they follow the boss's plan. When fighting the battle, an orc war boss is a truly powerful opponent when fighting them in a straight 1v1 fight being a worst case scenario for most who would encounter them. So, the Orc War Boss and Co. had a similar setup to the Black Orcs, with the War Boss being a general, and to take any of them, you needed a mob of Orc Boys. Stat line and points wise, the War Boss is 110 points, Movement 4, Weapon Skill 6, Best Skill 6, Strength 4, Toughness 5, Wounds 3, Initiative 5, Attacks 4, Leadership 9. The Big Boss is 72 points, Movement 4, Weapon Skill 5, Best Skill 5, Strength 4, Toughness 5, Runes 2, Initiative 4, Attack 3, Leadership 8. And the boss is 33 points, the standard bearer 83 points, 
and movement 4, weapon skill 4, bit skill 4, strength 4, toughness 4, wounds 1, initiative 3, attacks 2, leech 7. Now, is there any difference for the equipment and special rules compared to Black Orcs? Nope, not at all, other than they don't get a Black Orc sneak rule. And the boss, however, can have a boar, but only if he's leading a unit of boar boys. Yeah, cheaper than a Black Orc, but yeah, they could get caught in a unit's animosity, which is a bit of a downside, but you know, there is a magic item that can fix that at least. Still, one more Orc tribe to look at. The Savage Orcs. The Orcs were originally all as primitive as the Savage Orcs, until they learned of metal working from the Chaos Dwarfs. However, many tribes missed out, and the Savage Orc war bosses do not see this as a downside. No, they believe they are following the true path laid out by Gork and Mork, and carry out the rituals and traditions of their tribes to this day. They are still powerful warriors, and their traditions and rituals still make them powerful foes, and even a heavily armoured warrior will need to be careful when fighting. So, of course, you needed some Savage Orc to take them, and again, the war boss could be a general. Now, Savage Orcs also have the exact same stat line as the basic Orcs, but the war boss is 150, the standard bearer 95, the big boss 98, and the boss 45. Equipment wise, no difference again. So why are they more pricey then? Well, they do have two special rules. First, they are all frenzied, but also covered with protective tattoos. These give the orc a 6 plus save, which can be approved normally via shields and so on, however, it can only ever be made at worst a 6 plus save by modifiers. This is lots of the rare body armour though, as it covers them. Yeah, built in 6 plus save at all times is decent, as I've made enough of them to know it happens fairly often. And Frenzy on a war boss? Yeah, that's quite a decent number of attacks they can throw out, so yeah, that's why they're a bit pricier. Still, that's the orcs all done. Let's talk goblins. Goblins, rather than going war bosses of their tribes by strength, usually do so in other ways. Whether it by being the biggest, still. It could also be the richest. Or bribing and backstabbing their way to the position. Still, the different tribes also have other unique ways, with forest goblins accidentally pushing rivals in the giant spider pens, or a night goblin dropping a squid or stalagmite on their head. Still, once in charge, they keep some loyal cronies around them to secure their position, and make sure they do what they can to keep the tribe profitable, as to help ensure they don't get a dagger to the back. Now, unlike the orcs, the goblin characters all had the same costs and stats. Any of them could be war boss, but needed a goblin, forest goblin, or night goblin mob, depending on which one you had. Now, the war boss is 50 points, movement 4, weapon skill 5, best skill 6, strength 4, toughness 4, ruins 3, initiative 5, attacks 4, leadership 7. The big boss is 33 points, movement 4, weapon skill 4, Let's skill 5, strength 4, toughness 4, runes 2, initiative 4, attack 3, leadership 6. The boss is 15 points, and the standard bearer 65 points, and movement 4, weapon skill 3, best skill 4, strength 4, toughness 3, runes 1, initiative 3, attacks 2, leadership 5. Now, equipment wise, they're no difference to the orcs. Have a sword, without anything from the armory, and then 3, 2, 1 for magic items. Bosses, of course, being an exception, as they had to be equipped the same as their unit. Now, mounts. Any of them, bar the boss, who had to have the same as their unit if they were leading a unit with mounts, could have any of the monster mounts as normal. However, rather than orc chariots, they can have a goblin chariot for 65 points. Then, if a forest goblin, they can have a giant spider for 4 points, or if they're a normal goblin, a giant wolf for 4 points. Night Goblins have no cheap mount, unfortunately. Now, special rules. The Night Goblins are the only one to have something different than Fearing Elves, which they do still do, and that is they hate Dwarfs due to the constant wars they have with them. Yeah, for the Goblins came down to pick your flavour, really. Not much else. Still, that's all the Warrior characters out of the way. Shaman time! Their power comes from the war energy rated by all orcs and goblins near them. The more there are, the more easily they can cast their spells. The shamans also tend to act as soothsayers, guides, and ensure tribal rituals are performed. 
each tribe has different customs, but the shamans ensure they are all followed. When the time comes to battle though, they join their tribe and harness their energy to unleash devastating spells on enemies. Though they do need to be careful they don't too much at once, as otherwise the popping sounds of orc and goblins heads exploding can soon follow. Now the shamans follow similar rules of being taken to their other counterparts. Orc shaman needed orc boys, night goblin shaman night goblin mobs, and so on. The only real difference is there's no black orc one, as they don't have shamans. Now, both the Orc and Savage Orc Shamans share the same stats, though they had different costs, while the Goblins were the same stats and cost. So, Orcs first. The Orc Shaman is 57 points, the Savage Orc 59, Women 4, Women Skill 3, Bit Skill 3, Strength 3, Toughness 5, Ruins 1, Initiative 3, Attacks 1, Leadership 7. The Champion is 118 points, 122 for the Savage one, Women 4, Women Skill 3, Bit Skill 3, Strength 4, Toughness 5, Wounds 2, Initiative 3, Attacks 1, Leadership 7. The Master is 211 points, 219 for the Savage. Movement 4, Women Skill 3, Bit Skill 3, Strength 4, Toughness 5, Wounds 3, Initiative 4, Attacks 2, Leadership 7. Then finally the Lord, 287 points for the Normal and 303 for the Savage. Movement 4, Women Skill 3, Bit Skill 3, Strength 4, Toughness 5, Ruins 4, Initiative 5, Attack 3, Leadership 8. Equipment wise, they come with a sword base and allowed anything from the armory, though probably skip the light armor. And then they can have 1, 2, 3, 4 magic items and the same for wizard levels. Mounts, both could have a war ball for 8 points, a chariot for 81 points, or any monster mount. Special rules, these Shepherd Orc Shamans have the Frenzy and Tattoos as their normal fellows but also their bonus of making it become a 5 plus save and getting plus 1 magic card while a unit of savage orcs. Now what about the goblins? Well as I said they've all got the same stats and costs so doesn't matter the tribe. Shamans were 28 points, movement 4, weapon skill 2, weapon skill 3, strength 3, toughness 4, wounds 1, initiative 3, attacks 1, leadership 5. Champions, 83 points, Movement 4, Women Skill 2, Bit Skill 3, Strength 4, Toughness 4, Runes 2, Initiative 3, Attacks 1, Leadership 5. Masters, 159 points. Movement 4, Women Skill 2, Bit Skill 3, Strength 4, Toughness 4, Runes 3, Initiative 4, Attacks 2, Leadership 5. The Lords, 253 points. Movement 4, Women Skill 3, Bit Skill 3, Strength 4, Toughness 4, Runes 4, Initiative 5, Attacks 3, Leadership 6. They had the same equipment and wizard levels as their orc counterparts. The mounts were the same as the other goblin bosses. Special rules? Well, the night goblin shamans got their mushrooms and the forest goblins resistance to the egg bang table, but still getting a bit dizzy from it still. As for the play doll goblin shamans... Yeah, no, nothing special for them. Now, yeah, with Rem Skill 3 and 2, they're definitely not designed for fighting in any way really compared to the other characters, so keep them focused on magic. And also away from any unit with Mork's War Banner unless you want them to just instantly climb all over. So yeah, overall fairly standard characters, but the ability to go with one type of tribe or lots of different ones is nice. Still, next time we're going to move on to the knobs, and they have a lot of options here. It's actually 20 options to be exact, so we're going to split them up. The goblins will be up first, and we'll see how their units were in 4th edition, and then we'll look at the orcs and the others. See you then.